Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and continue. Uh, you find in an Indian woman, when compared to the world woman, other countries, <clears throat> what is the best and beautiful quality? One single quality Are you can you trying to get me into trouble? <laughs> how she is different and how she is greater than when compared to the other women all over the world. My answer, I think, when I, this is the last question that I've uh, reacted to in the original video. I think after this one, it's all new. So I think my answer to this one is it's going to be it's going to be boiled down to uh, culture, because we human beings are roughly the same, but our culture kind of changes us a little bit in terms of um, of what we prefer and want and do. So it's going to be down to the culture. See. Uh... I don't know why we are putting only women on the focus. We are always putting women in the focus because we believe either they can be right or wrong. And of course, men are right. So because we are always right, we are looking whether this is the right kind of woman or the wrong kind of woman. The nature has given a larger responsibility for the woman in terms of bearing a child and having a profound influence on the child in the early part of child's life. And when we talk about a child, don't think this is about reproduction. You and me are here because of that. So our very existence began in a woman's body. That is, if you're normal birth, I am normal birth. If you're normal birth, our life began in a woman's body. And today, the simple biological factors of being male or female, we are exaggerating it too much. I'm saying, when you're walking on the street, why should you be bothered whether somebody is a woman or a man? Why are you bothered what is in somebody's pants? It's not your business. Only in bathrooms and bedrooms it should matter, nowhere else. In the working places, on the street, wherever else we are, why should it matter whether somebody is a man or a woman? Why can't you just treat, it, treat them as human beings? I think we are excessively focused on this, which is creating a very unhealthy atmosphere. That means we are constantly over-infatuated with body parts, that is why we are going on recognizing people as… by their gender. You are not recognizing people by their intelligence, by their capabilities, by their competence, only by their gender. <clears throat> but it is not a fair way of looking at the world. For certain aspects of our life, gender is important. But for rest of the life, how much brains you got is important, how much capable you are is more important. Gender is only <coughs> valid in certain relationships. In rest of the relationships, gender shouldn't even come into the picture. Only then there will be equality. There is no need <coughs> There is no need to go on talking about women's rights. We must say human rights and women are part of it, that's all. So, about the Indian woman, <laughs> should I still talk? <laughs> In this country, for a long time, we've nurtured many wonderful things. But these wonderful things, because of many misunderstandings, have also taken on very horrendous forms. When I say it, it's taken on horrendous forms, many simple things which were done for the protection of the woman, for the well-being of the woman, 
have become discriminatory over a period of times and taken on very horrendous forms of exploitation. We must look back and see why these little things were created. If we don't address these things, the Western world is in… on a binge because they want to make male and female equal. It is not necessary to be equal, equal <coughs> opportunity is fine. It is not necessary to expect a woman to do the same things that a man is doing. Amazingly enough, I watched a YouTube video talking about that. <laughs> Again, it, it's very fascinating to me about human dynamics, human interactions with the opposite sex. But yes, <sighs> but what it's saying is very much true. It's, it's about not equality of outcome, or sorry, yeah, qual equality of outcome. It's about more along the lines of equity of outcome, meaning there's exactly 50% men and 50% women who get this job reg regardless if they qualify or not. They need that, screw qualifications, need 50-50. And then I'm sure it's going to go down to like, well, now we need to make sure race is into this. And we needed 50, 60, 16, <clears throat> 8, and 1. Forcefully need to do that because it's the only way to be equal. Then what is the point of the gender differentiation that nature has made? It's important the feminine in the world is as important as the masculine in the world. <clears throat> If… but today, in the name of equality, women are coming to your place where they are beginning to act like men because they know that's the only way they can succeed in the world. The only way they can succeed is they have to act like men. You see, even women doing like this these days, uh, this is not necessary because if you destroy the feminine, then you truly have enslaved the women. If you do not value the feminine in the world, all the gentleness will go away, you will have a marketplace at home also. Your, mar your marriage also will be a marketplace. It's already happening big time. Before people marry, they are making an agreement. When we break, who will get what in this house? Yes, prenuptial agreements are being made. Before we get married, already an agreement if we break, my bank balance is mine, yours is yours. How can two people live like this? But here, still we have the joy of two people becoming one and enjoying that maybe after some time you will fight, but still, <laughs> at least you have the joy of weaving two lives into one. When you go at it like this suspiciously in the name of equality, you will never know the joy of knowing each other, mingling with each other, being one with each other, nothing will happen. Home will become a marketplace, this is because of wrong ideas of equality. Equality you should not even talk about, we should talk about responsibility for each other. Oof, that's a good one. Again, responsibility, absolutely, freaking lutely. Um, what it says is very much true where women are becoming more like men because that's the only way they think they can succeed. They seem… the, the women seem to believe that the feminine traits are very weak and so they're becoming more masculine in the West in general. <clears throat> I have almost no issue saying that. Not all women, of course, but it's, it's I think it's a small minority, uh, small minority kind of, but it's growing. And then you have, I hear like YouTube groups called like the Passport Bros, where what they do is to go to other countries who have still the traditional feminine traits of females, females who are still very feminine. And, you know, uh, <laughs> the funny thing is, is Western women are saying, oh, they're just insecure, they don't know how to treat a woman, they don't know how to be with a woman. It's like, well, yeah, exactly, because you're not a woman, for the most part. These, quote-unquote, women are so masculine that they've kind of destroyed their femininity. And this is essentially what Sadhguru's talking about here, and it's kind of sad. It generally is. And I agree with him that the masculine and the feminine is very important. You need a balance in this world. You can't have too cold, hard, logical as it becomes a cold world. 
can't have too emotional either because it's going to be uh, chaos. <laughs> it's a balance between the two, and that's what the females and the males provide. Very beautifully explained, uh, Sadhguruji. Uh, thank you very much. And the next question is. Answer copy Jeshaval Chushano, then question like copy Cheshun or anything. These are not copied questions, Guruji, these are mine only. Copy Cheshavalo Alage, Walle Rasko Nostar and eh? I just wanted to, I just wanted to save your valuable time. So I, I just, pre, uh, <laughs> Guruji, the Ayurvedic science me, me, uh, medicine is, uh, will identify the three major properties of uh, the human body, Sattva, Rajas and Tama, which is not recognized by the uh, allopathy science. So my question is, when you recognize these three uh, qualities in a body, human body, and differentiate accordingly how different and how how different it will be for a tamasic uh, food uh, consumer be it non vegetarian or uh, masala whatever generally in general a tamasic food ca consumer how difficult for him to cope up with the other people in doing like spiritual practices like yoga and other meditation and all. Will it make any difference for the tamasic food consumer and sattvic food consumer? I am putting it that way. When we say tamas, rajas and tasattva, what it means is those kind of food substances which create lethargy in the system, dullness, increases sleep. Sleep means death, you are dead for eight hours a day or ten <laughs> hours a day, whatever, or one-third of your life you're anyway dead. <laughs> Rajas means you're active in the world. Activity without the necessary awareness, after some time you will get frustrated with activity because Suddenly one day when you stop and look, you don't know why you're doing what you're doing. Tamas means you're conscious, it brings consciousness. It's not just in food, this is in us. We are also recognizing foods which support this, that's all. It is not that food will cause these qualities in you. You have these qualities, some foods support that, some foods don't support that, that's about it. Food is not a deciding factor. You can eat garbage and still be a Buddha. But why eat something which doesn't support you and go against it? See, it is like you bought a diesel car and you put kerosene in it. You buy a petrol car and you put diesel in it. It will still go, but it will not function at its optimum. <clears throat> Real quick on that one, um, uh, don't put diesel in a well, he says petrol car, a uh, gas car. <laughs> I've heard this from from some people stressing that if you accidentally put diesel in a gas car, you do not you do not turn it on, you do not run it, you don't do it. I I don't know for sure, so definitely fact check this one just in case. If you ever put diesel in a gas car, do not run that car. I. I it seems very, what they say seems to be very, very bad. I definitely got to look it up afterwards because I won't, that's just hopefully never make that mistake. But I've, that's what I've heard. So I'm just throwing it out there. So we should see what kind of food are we designed for. If you look at this fundamentally, there are various aspects which will tell you certain stories about what you should eat. Now it is not only about human beings, it is about the individual human being. Right now, what is the nature of your quality, accordingly you should eat. If you leave it to your senses, your senses know what to eat, how much to eat, how much of what to eat. But because 
too much education, sense is gone. Everything is by information. What to eat, they will Google and see. Oh. <laughs> if you… In the in, initially you said if a farmer can be told about meteorological predictions, if a fisherman can be told about meteorological predictions, how things will happen. I want you to understand, even now, the best fishermen in the world never look at the meteorological predictions. Meteorological. <laughs> Okay, so while it's looking up, it's just what would happen. Uh, the diesel will not be able to easily pass through the fuel filter. Instead, it will clog up the fuel filter, and whatever amount of diesel is then makes its way through the engine will clog the fuel injectors, making them inoperable, and will result in the engines gumming up and seizing. So I'm guessing it's a lot of engine work. It's not like... It basically it will probably make your car inoperable, and then you're going to pay a lot of money to get that cleaned up. So fear, I guess that's the reason why they say just don't start it, don't do anything. Uh, I need to get, pump that the gas, that diesel out of there and clean the engine as much as possible. <laughs> and um, and that one, yeah. If you're a fisherman, you're a pro. You can <coughs> you can still follow the meteorologist and kind of follow how things have been. So, for example, if meteorologist says 80% chance of rain, you go out and fishing, and all of a sudden you're like, I'm catching a lot of fish. And then meteorologist has 60% chance of rain. You go out there, and it's like, hmm, not a lot of fish. Then again. You do this for a couple of months and every time it's 80% you catch a lot of fish and 60% you don't catch a lot of fish, you know when to go. So you, and then you, from there you can also use just whatever is your surrounding, the feeling of the air, whether there's that smell of rain or, or whatever it may be that you sense when you're out there. Um, like how for me, I try to pay attention to my body and the feelings it gets. When I get sick, whenever I just weird think weird things, I try to pay attention to that so that I know whenever there's something that feels different, I was like, okay, that's I need to pay attention to that to see if I need to go to the hospital or not uh, to get it checked out. Um, I knew whenever I got COVID, uh, even though I never got COVID before, my first time ever getting COVID, something was different. I could smell the iron in my blood in my nose. And I knew it's like, well, something's up. I'm getting sick, but this is a different kind of sickness because of the iron in the blood. So it's kind of like that with the fishermen, I'm sure. But you can use instruments to help you amplify your your um, your senses as well, because these are things that are measurable that fish also are able to detect. Animals in general are able to detect certain things in the air, and then if you have instruments that can detect that, it can help you out and amplify your own uh, instincts and things you detect in air as well. I've been on fishing boats with some people I would off assume. the African coast and Mediterranean coast. They put their nose up in the air and he says, in two hours there'll be a storm, storm, we need to go back. Okay, he <clears> never <throat> looks at the thing. Because every other creature knows there is going to be a storm. Mm. If you observe the fish, they are all behaving, you know, when tsunami happened <coughs> in southern India, we were the first people to be there. In less than twenty-four hours, we were there with medical vans and I was personally there. What I noticed was there were lots of dead bodies, human dead bodies. Cattle which were tied down, they had died. None of the loose cattle had died. Even the donkeys did not die. Even the fish, not a single dead fish, on the beach. All of them knew it's coming. Only human beings did not know it's coming. Not only that, in Andamans we have a air force station, they have the best meteorological <laughs> stuff. They did not know it's coming and the entire air force base got really washed up. Why I'm telling this to you is because when we say we are the most evolved life on this planet, what it means is, we have the most complex and sophisticated neurological system. If we have the most complex and sophisticated neurological system, we must be able to sense more things than anybody can sense, isn't it? No, no, don't clap, you're not sensing anything <laughs> But now, because of a little cerebral activity, our thought and emotion has overtaken us in such a way, 
what you think and feel has become paramount. Your psychological drama has bigger… has become bigger than the cosmic drama. Yes, what you are thinking today, isn't it more important than what's happening in the entire cosmos? So because of this fallacy, because of this misunderstanding, because you're too engrossed in your own psychological drama, you can't sense it. Otherwise, I must tell you this, I was living on a farm in a remote place outside of Mysore many years ago. I hired one guy whose hearing was very bad. Because his hearing is bad, he looks like a fool because he doesn't understand what people say. So in the village everybody makes fun of him, uh, they call him names and things and you know, treat him badly. So I said, you come and live on my farm, so he lived on. He will simply sit like this because he can't have conversations. If I have to have conversation with him, I have to shout at him, he will understand half the sentence. So he simply sits. Suddenly one day he gets up and starts preparing the plow and the bullocks. I said, what are you doing? He says, no, tomorrow we will plow. I said, there is the rain. He says, no, it's going to rain tonight. I look at the sky, it's all empty sky. How is it going to rain today? No, Swami, it will <coughs> rain today. And it will for sure rain today. And tomorrow morning he's plowing at 5.30 in the morning. Then I thought, oh, this dumb idiot, he knows something that I don't know. So I went there and sat just like him, squatting where he used to sit, same place and I put my hand out like this, like this, trying to feel the moisture, temperature, smell of the earth, this, this, this. I took eighteen months, every day I sat because I was insulted, this dumb idiot knows something that I don't know, I can't take it. <laughs> so. I it's really weird to say, uh, for Sadhguru to say he was insulted though. This dumb idiot knows something that I don't know, I can't take it. <laughs> so I sat there, felt it, watched the leaves, watched the insects, watched the birds. Then today I will tell you, if I say there's going to be rain, ninety percent, there is going to be a rain. This is not <laughs> some magic, this is not some <laughs> yoga, this is just observation. When I'm laughing because it's 90 percent, that reminds me of meteorologist who says, there's a 90 percent chance of rain today. <laughs> Said, Guru, you're becoming a meteorologist there, with percentages, there's a 20 percent chance or 90 percent chance. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll say this, though, about that. It's very true. When you lose one of your senses, at least from what I've heard in science, is that your other senses are heightened because you're, I don't know why, I, it makes sense that they would because you now depend on four of your five senses for survival uh, and you're not diverting energy towards the fifth sense anymore. <clears throat> but you don't necessarily need to lose a sense to understand nature per se, um, but we, Sadhguru is talking about we have the best cerebral, yeah I do believe so. Our intellect, our mind is the greatest of all the animal kingdoms. And that's the reason why we're kind of top dog at the moment. But we do not have the best nose, we do not have the best hearing, we do not have the best eyes, we do not have the best taste or feeling. Those are other animals out there who have the best of all of those. So we can use our intellect to kind of make predictions about things when, again, you know, we don't have the best. Some people actually have very sensitive skin and they can tell the difference in moistures in the air. I would not doubt that. There's people out there who have a very sensitive, oh, uh, there was a lady I remember on YouTube where she can smell, um, I think it's a cancer, a particular type of cancer. Dogs can do it too. But they did this test where they had some people with and without, and I think, I believe she nailed it. She had the ability to smell. She was an older lady too. But yes, there's no doubt there are people out there who have heightened sense of smell, even if they have all their senses still. It's weird i guess i don't know I thought that weird to me is pretty damn cool <laughs> weird things are pretty cool for me in my opinion but yeah um so maybe this blind person not only losing or deaf person sorry not only losing his hearing but also probably has a heightened sense of i don't know what it is maybe smell the smell the uh the the rain you know you, whenever you step outside after a rain you can smell the the rain on the grass or whatever it is you can smell that it's rained and I wouldn't doubt that when it rains somewhere else and that wind blows that smell by you can pick up the sense of it I wouldn't doubt that Sadhguruji 
one of my uh, family friends son he, his name is vishwak and he is just 7 years old ever since he was born all his interests were about seeds or plant plants and trees he was uh, he's obsessed with only them no chocolates no biscuits no cakes no sweets no toys no video games oh. no playing outside and he's completely into meditatively into thinking and obsessed about knowing about trees planting them nurturing them and collecting many seeds and all when i mentioned this to one of my friend another friend he commented this must be something uh, he attained from previous incarnation he is a prodigy because we 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 rarely we, we don't see one one in one crow also we don't see a child like that completely obsessed with plants so my question is sadguru ji do you believe in incarnations to come and the previous <clears throat> ones for me i don't i say sadguru does because i believe he said in his video where he he essentially came back i think i believe it was three times really weird if you believe the reincarnation is usually more than three times but maybe perhaps this is the three times he remembers i don't believe in reincarnation um again to speak back about the super senses of people there could be something in their in people's brains that make them more interested in something than other people there are like young kids like 6 years old because i used to wa uh, watch i wouldn't say i used to watch opera but there was a time when i was just listen to a whole bunch of different kinds of music like the mongolian throat <laughs> for what they call them but it's so amazing and then the Ooglers I can't, I can't I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right they have a beautiful music that I remember I saved one of them and now it's gone because I don't know why probably because of China I've heard that China was doing something with them and it was a really really beautiful music I wanted to listen to it again I can't find it anymore it's deleted it was uh, blo or deleted or blocked delete but probably um but again uh sorry <laughs> going a little off topic there but the I, I remember you seeing this young i believe it's a asian uh girl of maybe 6 or 7 years old maybe 8 i don't remember the age but she was playing the violin very professionally there's a, there there are a few child prodigies out there and it's genuinely amazing that they can pick up on certain things and now i've heard in the states there are what they call autism or there are kids that are autistic i think and I don't know if it's all of them or just some of them that has this uncanny ability to remember or to do something very spectacular that they should not be able to do it under age but generally speaking it seems like great gifts comes with uh, how to say uh great benefits comes with great disadvantages and being autistic they're not very social or something I can't re I don't exactly know what the autism is but I think it's because just because i I've, i've heard it i never really cared to un understand it. i just know it's something that's not great to have but then there's always this great i want to say great benefit but there's always this superpower <laughs> it's really weird to call it that but it genuinely is it's some kind of superpower it comes with it and it's like you know i i <laughs> I don't know what the parents would want, you know, I wish they got what they wanted, whether it's the kid has a superpower but has autism or just no autism with no superpower because everyone wants to start off normal and then develop their lives as they see fit. But with autism that kind of removes a bit of the aspect of your life, but that doesn't mean that you remove your ability to live life in accordance with it. But yes, uh I, but you get my point. <laughs> Because in certain beliefs, certain religions, they don't believe. What is your uh, thought? what you call on that it doesn't matter incarnation or no you got to put that boy in my car <laughs> because very few lives have that much sense as to how life happens others never paid attention to anything uh there is need for so much entertainment in the world simply because people have no attention for life if you pay attention to life you will see it'll engage you in such a way there is no time for any entertainment if you just observe one plant growing it will keep you engaged for an entire lifetime because it's so fantastic 
Simply you see, ah, plants are growing. You are a tourist on this planet <laughs> because all the time all you are doing is take a selfie. Plant, selfie. Tree, selfie. Elephant, selfie. Sadhguru, selfie. <laughs> <coughs> To speak on that too real quick. I'm sorry I'm saying so much, but again, I want to share my opinion out there. And that's the reason why you're watching this video now. If you don't, know, if you don't want me talking, you watch the original. You should have already watched the original anyway. But um, yes, it's really crazy. Um, I've seen some videos where you see people like taking TikToks or Instagram or so, I don't know what it is, but they see them throwing trash in the, in the, in the baskets or, or bags and then showing them, it's like, oh, look, I'm doing good. And then all of a sudden, after the fact, they just leave all that stuff there. They're just, it's all for show. So terrible. Jesus. It's really terrible. It's, you it are really a tourist. <laughs> a tourist will not know Hyderabad as a Hyderabadi will know Hyderabad, isn't it? Ooh, whoa. It's blown out. <laughs> so you must decide whether on this planet you are a tourist or you are a life that's born out of it, carries the earth within you, lives it and dies into it. So, one boy after <laughs> of many millions that are born every day, one boy, put him in my car. <laughs> he got your blessings, uh, Sadhguruji, he is wherever he is now, he is very lucky to have your blessings. And speaking with you, I, I just realized one thing that I forgot that I am a singer. Please sing, sir. I, 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 I am recollecting when you are talking about selfie, I am recollecting one of the most popular Tamil songs. Vandanaal mudal indanaal varai vanamaravillai because of the man's evil intentions, selfish intentions, it, it happens. Sir. It's, it, the song, it says man's nature. But my question, Sadhguruji, you are talking about selfies. Wherever you go, you are lost in, uh, you are obsessed with selfies and you are self-obsessed. So this self-obsession, in what kind, hundred years back, would have been in mankind? Because there were no cell phones and there were no selfies. But the nature, this nature, this self-obsession nature, should have been there, definitely. It's a hypothetical question. Can you uh, <coughs> kindly guess what kind of obsession that man uh, would have Oh, I had? thought you thought I'm more than hundred years, so you're asking me. How was it hundred years ago? <laughs> I'm not... <clears throat> I think I understood the question. Um, um, anyway, so let me try answering that real quick. Cause I, I want to know if my, my, my answer is correct or somewhat in the ballpark. <clears throat> the thing about humanity is, is that with technology, it, all it does is... It, it's, how, does it, how do I say it? It amplifies our whatever we desire or need wants or whatever it is. Desire is more than likely. Technology is a desire. Um, so food, water, and shelter are not necessarily desires. Those are needs. So our desire for that is obvious for survival. That is not something that we can say that is uh, negative. Obviously, we want to live in comfort. We want to eat and we want to have shelter and we want to have clean water. <clears throat> but in terms of the selfishness, yes, even even back in the day, um, the selfishness of hogging more food, uh, hogging better shelters, hogging more women or men, women generally speaking, um, hogging more resources, hogging more territory, that's all been innate. It's just in, in humanity itself, we always wanted more. Because we, we, this wanting more is from our survival. The more that we have, the less we have to worry about. We don't have to worry, like if we have more territory, we have more safe, in, in a sense, safe space because, um, you know, people are not supposed to be in our territory. So if people are not in our territory, we have this buffer between the dangers out there versus uh, being so close to us. If our territory is just this little tiny space in this little tiny room, and that means dangers are 
are exter are outside this little tiny space. Uh, I'm trying to hope that I can describe that a little bit better. That's the reason why we have countries, and that's the reason why we have borders. Is that whatever's in this border is you know U.S., Canadian, Chinese, Indian, Japanese, you know, um, whatever it may be. And then if anyone intrudes on those borders, they're in, they're they're breaking the safety of that country because you're not invited, you're not welcome. So these borders are meant for safety for the people in the country in a lot of degrees. But um, and by having a beaker border, don't get me wrong, it's, it, it requires a lot of <laughs> a lot of protection, but it means that you're kind of wealthy as well. Um, but yes, this, this greed has always been within us. Our selfish nature has always been with us, within us, even within the country itself. Uh, individual people in there are also selfish. I mean, it's just a matter of, again, it kind of ties into our, our survival to a degree. The more property we have, the more money we have, the more secure that we feel. That's just kind of the same thing with uh, land and border because, you know, um, if you have a wide land and an invasion country, uh, an invading country comes in, you have a lot of buffer before it gets to the capital or to the important part of that country. So the bigger the, the country is, the more land that invading army has to go through. Kind of like that's what I mean by safety around your, your territory and stuff. That's the reason why you have... Um, rich people with very big land because they enjoy the openness of their land and you don't have to see people <laughs> in your front porch or anything like that and also they have like fences and stuff to keep people out of their their, their land i mean this is their property you know, that they still have to pay taxes to the government but get hopefully you understand what i'm saying well i look it maybe so <laughs> <laughs> let's see uh, people have always been the same it is just that, it's like this. <laughs> Even thousand years ago, people were digging the soil. But today we got earth movers, so we dug it up seriously because we have the tools. Even then they've been trying to divert little bit of river water to their land with their pickaxe. <laughs> today we are doing with big machines, so it looks like a disaster. Even then they were self-obsessed, mm -hmm. they decorated themselves, they tattooed themselves, they did all kinds of things to themselves. Now you have technological tools, so it looks very enlarged. The same people, same problems, <laughs> just that with technology it has taken on a different turn and a different color. Even then people were looking at the mirror. Now they're looking at the phone, you know. When there was no mirror, people were shining their brass plate and looking at the brass plate, how they're looking. So today they've got a phone which does all kinds of things for them. So it is going out of control. Mm -hmm. The self-obsession, the tools for self-obsession hundred years ago were very minimal. Today there are too many a whole industries thriving on your self-obsession. <laughs> so it looks very enlarged. But fundamentally human beings are same. I don't mm. see any difference. <laughs> I've been around for more than hundred years, you can see. <laughs> Sadhguruji. Okay, I'm gonna pause it right there. No more video, so if you want to end it right here, it's fine. It's gonna be me talking for a little bit. So yeah, I 100% agree. Humans haven't really changed. We changed a little bit, of course, because of our environment, our situations. You know, we, we no longer have to worry about shelter. We kind of have it. We don't longer have to worry about clean water. We kind of have it. We no longer worry about having to find food or hunt for food because we can shop for it. You know, the situations have changed, but our animal instincts kind of hasn't. Our self-obsessed nature or everything I, I, this is what I believe everything that who you are is is amplified by the technology and the money that you have if you have a lot of money it, it amplifies your true nature and then a great example of that you can look this up is uh, lottery winners who wins the lottery there are people out there who wish they've never won the lottery more money that they can earn in 10 lifetimes, maybe even more than that. 
but they wish to have never won the lottery. Some people, not all. Um, so the reason why is because they went crazy with spending their money and just trying to have fun and whatever else, doing drugs, I'm sure. But after the money ran out, I think they could not live their life normally again. You know, they probably could never really go back to a job again. And live it kind of and kind of work that job again, kind of normally, because you know you you had all this money for like six months to a year, you didn't have to worry about anything, but that now threw your entire life out of whack because you kind of had this habit of how you lived, and that all went out the window when you when you won the lottery, and now you have to try to get back to that lifestyle of struggling that you're not used to anymore. And there are there are a lot of lottery winners out there who wish they never won the lottery. Those are generally the people who spent all the money and are now broke. There are many lottery winners out there who won it and who are very smart about it and now are retiring early in their lives because they won the lottery. <laughs> also, I get jealous about the guy that wants to go buy milk and bought one ticket and then hit the lottery. <laughs> I want to be that guy. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. So, yes, uh, technology um, amplifies of who you are as a person. You kind of reveal yourself a little bit, kind of like I'm doing right now. And also, winning the lottery uh, can, can amplify who you are as a person as well. Uh, situation, there's many situations where uh, it can show and reveal the true kind of person of who you are, your actions that you take, the things that you do in life. Sadhguru is uh, another example of Riley for Rivers. What did he do? Did he genuinely do it? Did he really make an impact? Did he... Now, mind you, he cannot force any. Uh, he can't force any country to um, to you know to do uh, Riley for or save the rivers or anything like that. Um, essentially, Riley for Rivers. You know, the best he can do is go there and say, "Hey, look, here's the paperwork, so that you shine it." show that you signed it and I think he's sending out uh, people every so often to make sure they're keeping up with it I mean that's the best Sadhguru can do he cannot force governments to say Sadhguru can't go over there and say nope you need to do this he can't do that the best thing he can do is just say hey look this is a good faith thing I, I trust that you will do it to, well for one it's going to benefit your country anyway because we need rivers and we need forestation um, so that's the best he can do and and then what he does with his money what he does with his life are great examples of who he is it's 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 be mindful of the things and actions that you do because it's, it's very much a representative of who you are a lot of people can sometimes see that but then also at the same time there's a lot of people who can't who act very foolish and arrogant and don't see that they are like that they think they're entitled but that's a great way to see what kind of person they are. Anyways, <laughs> too much talking now. Ooh, um, man, I have went as long as this timer right here. Anyways, uh, that's my reaction for this, for part two. Hopefully there's just one more part, which I think there will be. Um, if you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.